Have you ever had someone say to you, you looked like you were in the zone? Have you ever thought about the times where you did your best work, played your best game of whatever, or did your best flying? For me, these are often times that I'm in the zone, and I know it's the same for many glider pilots. I took a couple of flights from Williams recently, where we had some interesting valley conditions. These days are usually low and slow, compared to what we're used to anyway. In the past, I would have felt very nervous and probably would have made a lot of mistakes. But this time, I felt very much at ease, one with the glider, and was able to enjoy every minute of it, because I was in the zone. Being in the zone is becoming part of a tight feedback loop. Psychologists call this a flow state where your mind settles into a steady rhythm. Predict, observe, and correct. It can happen in a wide range of tasks, from drawing to playing sports to writing code. It's a very important state of mind because it allows us to be completely absorbed in a task, living in the moment, and doing things with better performance, less self-judgment, and more enjoyment. In essence, it's a kind of meditation, not where your mind is devoid of thought, but where it's completely engaged and doing what it was really meant to do. It applies to any task where the feedback loop can be short enough. If any of these phases takes too long, that will throw you out of the zone. It's commonly discussed in sports psychology because there is usually a fast-moving ball, vehicle, or player. In gliding, the thing being predicted, observed, and corrected is usually the weather. Where am I likely to find a good climb? What are my instruments telling me? And do I need to fly somewhere else? The first step is the hardest. Prediction requires you to coalesce your prior experience with the forecast and what you observe outside the canopy. A beginner has little to no prior experience, except what they may have heard from others. Reading and understanding forecast takes practice, and understanding the big picture looking out of the canopy is just as unnatural. I remember a flight with David Greenhill once, very early in my gliding journey. He took us on a short cross-country flight and was doing most of the flying when he asked, What do you think is happening here? I was completely surprised by this question. What does he mean? I had no idea what kind of answer he wanted, so I just said, Uh, I don't know. Then he pointed out that there was a clear demarcation between the area where there were clouds and the area where there were none. When I look back on this, I know he was thinking that maybe we'd find some convergence at the boundary and that the blue side was probably washed out. Prediction is also important to help you manage stress. And the good news is that much of this can be done beforehand. The two things I focus on in pre-flight are, where am I likely to struggle? And what are my landout options? I constantly review landouts in Google Earth, in real life from the air, and lately I've been driving to some of them. Whatever you find hardest to think about while you're in the air, do your best to do that on the ground because you can take as long as you need. Can confirm that it has been. The observation part is mostly easy for anyone. But there is something critical, which is to configure your instruments to present you with the right data at all times. There's nothing more annoying than the need to twist knobs and turn buttons in a thermal to understand whether or not you can leave it or need to take it higher. This is a constant evolution for me. I change the display and info on my computer constantly as I realize I want to see certain things at certain times and that other stuff is not really so helpful. Correction is also not so hard, but there are some catches here. I think a common error is to continue going in the same direction or doing the same thing when it's clearly not working. I used to do this when I was learning. I would hit a line of sync and continue on to my target in mostly the same line and at the same speed as if I were not in sync. It wasn't a problem of observation. I knew I was in sync, but more of a failure to take corrective action. The failure is in our human tendency just to keep doing what we're doing. You can also get stuck here by trying to figure out what is the best correction. This is totally not necessary. Just try something different. If you're on a line of sync, just turn a little bit left or right. If it gets better, great. If it gets worse, try the other way. 
Learning to get in the zone isn't easy. It usually takes a lot of practice to gather the experience you need to make it work. For me, I usually find that there is some threshold where the loop becomes shorter than whatever time my brain needs it to be, but then suddenly everything clicks into place. This is why it's important to focus on the process of gaining experience and not get too frustrated with yourself. It will eventually click. My friend Ben Hiroshima also made a video about these flights. Go check out his channel and give him a like. Peace out. I'll see you in the skies.